So whenever we go on shoots, we obviously need to plan for the time we get there. And the best way to check that is through Google Maps or Waze. But how does it know our ETA? Navigation apps use two main sources, satellite and crowdsource data. Google uses satellites to calculate speed limits on highways and streets to give the most accurate estimation for any route. But since driving speeds vary, it's not always super accurate. Its really based startup Waze, however, uses what's called social mapping location data, which relies on users to share real-time info on traffic and road structures, making the creation of all this a collaborative effort. In Malaysia, people are okay with sharing and promoting their personal data. We are okay with sharing our location data. We are okay with sharing the status of whether this road is traffic or not, or putting to some other road users at the same time. We are okay with that because we are pretty social. In 2013, Google bought over Waze for 1 billion US dollars. Together, Google got to adopt some of Waze's user engagement features, also helping Waze enhance their search functions. It's a win-win situation. They also managed to cut out competition from Facebook and Apple from using Waze's technology. Here's how crowdsourcing works. Anonymous data is sent to Google through the location services running on your phone. What they do is that they have crowdsourced data coming from all their millions of users worldwide at that particular location. So they don't just look at the data that they collect now, but they also look at the historical data. So they, they, they are smart enough to understand that your movement on a particular road depends on the weather. Is it holiday? What is the typical speed it takes on similar situations. Google records a traffic jam when you're traveling at a slower than usual speed. And once you can drive through an area normally, the roads will turn blue again, even if others are still driving slow. However, there is no clear answer on how many slower than usual drivers it takes for Google Maps to register a slowdown. For Waze, users are encouraged to leave the app open and running in the background to help contribute to its accuracy. And if you know a shortcut to your destination that the app or others don't, it creates a new route, which is beneficial for the 5.9 million active Wazers in Malaysia as of 2018. Kuala Lumpur alone has 2.5 million active Wazers. We were unable to find the stats for Malaysian Google Maps users, but according to Wiser.my's Twitter survey, 65% of its voters prefer using Google Maps. Of course, allowing anyone to contribute to real-time traffic info makes for a great user community. But as we all know, the internet is full of fools, and this happened in February. A German artist created a fake traffic jam on Google Maps with 99 phones actively using the app in a wagon. However, he discovered that the wagon had to be consistently moving for a jam to get registered. And when a car drove by the wagon at normal speed, Maps would register traffic as normal. It was only when the wagon was in motion and the street was empty that a traffic jam would show on Google Maps. A similar case happened in 2014 too. Two Israeli students and their advisors created thousands of fake Waze accounts to cause a fake traffic jam that lasted hours, which really directed drivers from their planned routes. Though these experiments were somewhat harmless, they were both trying to prove the same point, that anyone could mess with the system. Both Google and Waze were notified of these hacks in hopes that they would prevent it from happening again, especially if used maliciously. Which app do you guys prefer using and why? Let us know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let us know in the comments about what other topics you'd like us to take a look into.